meeting is called to order. The running board of education meeting is called to order. The board of education is in compliance with chapter 231 of the public laws of 1975, entitled the Open Public Meetings Act. The time, date, and location of this meeting was appropriately advertised by notifying the retrospect as well as posted notices in Barrow Hall, Runnymede Post Office, Mary Gold School, Online Bingham School, Grace Daring School, mm -hmm. and the Runnymede Public School District website. We will save the pledge for our public meeting. Roll call board members. Ms. Adair. Ms. Beebe. Mr. Buckon. Present. Ms. Stevenson. Present. Ms. Farry. Ms. Panzarella. Ms. Smith. Here. Ms. Trillo. Here. Ms. Spaulding. Here. Also present, Mark Iannucci, Superintendent, Earl Vassallo, Interim Business Administrator, Sean McCarran, Supervisor of Curriculum and Instruction. That is it for right now. At the, excuse me? I'm the business consultant. Oh, excuse me, business consultant. I'm just reading what's here. Sorry. Um, sorry, Mr. Business Consultant. Um, at this time, we are open for any public, meet, uh, public comments on agenda items only. Anybody have any issues or concerns this time? All right, if not, move on to policies and public relations. As we talked about earlier, um, I, I want to say it was the last meeting that we talked in, in April. Um, we met Strauss SMA right before that last meeting that we had. Um, we can suspend policy 0131, as you see there, regarding the two-year policy. Okay. Since we have the bulk, I told you, I kind of told you this throughout the year about policies and everything. Mm -hmm. that there's we look behind you here, um, sifting through this stuff. Um, it has been a arduous tour, sure, for the board office staff. I appreciate all the help. So we were going to suspend this policy just for this meeting. I remember that now. And then, you know, moving forward, like next month in June, we're going to have some more policy for the first reading. And again, I always want a second reading and everything else. But moving forward. for tonight, since as you got these two, you know, Substantial policies. What was Strauss has may set these late last week. Um, I'll say this Thursday. Right? Um, we took them a couple more days than they originally had thought. So you're going to suspend that policy, or excuse me, that, yeah, that policy, and then you know, talk about these policies, mm -hmm. any questions you have. Um, I'm sure, I have some things that I'd like to bring up. So you can bring some stuff up. Just there's no set like script here. Okay. I just want to kind of you can go bylaws and then go to zeros, go to 1000s, 2000s, 3000s, and hopefully at the end of that, you can have a motion and we can have those approved, which will be effective and then we'll be up to date. What's that? Sure. And Ms. Wilson is a policy. Before you start discussing it, you're going to have a motion and a second to open up discussion and then. At the end of discussing all of the policies, is okay. when you then do the roll call vote. For number one, on which the is all of them. For all of them. For so all we have to open. We have to have a motion. You're going to have a motion. Okay. Second to open the discussion, and then you can discuss everything for as long as it takes. And just then do, do the roll call. Just do this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So at this time, so we can get started, since there's no public comment, I need a motion to approve item number one under policy and public relation. Motion made by Patty. Second. Seconded by Naomi. Now we'll go into questions. Okay. Ms. Wilson, will give you a little background of the work she's been working with closely with Strauss Estimate. Okay. Ms. Wilson, okay. Take it away. I wanted to, um, they originally sent us a book that just had our policies. Naomi was, had just happened to bring back her book that had some policies and regulations we had already approved. When they did the audit, I want you to also be aware. There's many more pages to that audit that we had in place and voted on in 2009 that have not been updated since then. So we had a lot. We're going to re-vote on everything and vote on as a book then to pick out every little piece. They had me narrow the regulations and the policies down to the we have? piece that you have now that is what we had to look at. There have been updates done that we hadn't updated. Some of them are brand new policies because of the teacher evaluation change mm -hmm. and other things have changed um, for the students. So in, uh, I think a lot with the athletics and different things. So that's what you have there. Some of them are brand new policies. That's like the SEA, the Strauss, SMA adopted. That's when they got them. That's their policy. The other was our board might have adopted them, but after we adopted it, there was changes in the policy. So um, that's why we had, and that's why we're where we are. They then sent us these with all the updates in. 
that we have to, they're going to get the, the, num the date in them and all that. Some of them that we approved when we gave them, we actually went through, once you got your book approved in 2009, and we went through every board meeting, the policies were approved, and we looked for them. Some of them we found with dates on them, some of them we could not even find. So that's what we're doing here. We have them, they're approved, you approve them, they have the updates, they just had everything on their computers. So they've gotten everything, so we at least have a hard copy of everything. And you, know, you want to base your policy driven district we will be caught to something that comes right. up and then we don't have something in place that we're going to ask you something that's right away. It's not, again, not the plain game, right? We just want to make sure that this day, this day on, we have it. So yeah. They've done a great job getting stuff to listen. But, you know, it's a bit of learning experience. So, question, question so, on So, we'll go through yeah. policies and well, then we'll go through regulations. Is that sure. what we're going to do? We're going to go, so this policy audit summary, if we take that out, um, maybe we'll go like section by section, like Ms. Brian-Uchi said. Does anyone have any questions on bylaws? So that would be the zero, the zero. Does any, did anybody have any questions there? No? Okay. How about administration? Yes. Do you have a copy of that organizational chart? First one that you yes. see. We just gave that to you, and that's obviously um, if you're on that orientation handbook. Mm -hmm. We talked about this before. Right. This is similar, it's just like same meat and potatoes of it, just a little different format. Mm -hmm. Reports to who? So, Mr. Buck, I'm sorry if I interrupted you there. No, 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 not at all. Now, how did this change from what was, I know you said you didn't like the way the chart was set up. It just, it flowed to look like, um, like certain people reported to people they didn't report to. Like the support staff reported to the certified staff, but it just, like, it looked like the way like the instructional aid might report to a teacher who reports to the principal, so we just kind of branched oh, okay. everything out, okay. so it kind of squares off like that. Does anybody have any questions there? Besides that, Mr. Balkan, did you have any other questions? Uh, on? Yes, uh, I, have, I have one, two, three, four, five, six of the policies I, I have questions on. Are they under administration? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, not all, but yes, I have some. The first one would be. Can you uh, tell us what numbers you have? Yes, policy 1140, affirmative action program. There, it's just a thought in, in, in the handbook that we're putting together. Uh, and if the majority doesn't feel support, then fine. But uh, if you read the second paragraph, it says the affirmative action team shall develop the comprehensive equity plan. I'm just throwing out. Do you think are we should have policy or you under regulations? I'm on policy. Oh, you're on policy. I'm on the, where it reads, okay. there, they develop the, the team develops a comprehensive equity plan. Does the board need to have a copy of what that equity plan is so we understand what their goals and objectives and actions are? It's a question, that's all. I'm looking at the policy on affirmative, act, affirmative right. action program. Okay. On the back page, the back page. second paragraph, reads, the affirmative action team, they have to have a team, right. shall develop a comprehensive equity plan that follows New Jersey law. Okay. Do, do we feel, do you feel we should have a handbook for board members a copy of what this comprehensive equity plan is. It's just a question. Yeah, that's easy. That, that, that can. But does it necessarily have to be in the handbook? Does it, um, can we got there be a new reference as far, because if you start doing that, then every time some kind of okay. plan comes up pursuant to New Jersey in. law, then we're gonna have to add that to that handbook. Okay. I'm just wondering if it would be better just to have a, like a reference page. Sure. For, yeah. you know, each, different type of plan that certain teams are involved with. Okay. Very good. All right. Let's see here. The next one I have a question on in that area was 2431. I think it's on the second page. Under the, oh, no, I'm sorry. Maybe. Can we just make sure no one has any other uh, questions under administration at yeah, this I, time? I have one under administration. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, it is 1631.
The residency, 1631? No, no, I had no problem with that. I mean, I knew that there was a date. I didn't know what the date was. I was glad to actually see where it said 2011 mm -hmm. was, but that's not what I'm looking for. It's under superintendent's evaluation. Maybe that would be 12, that's 1240. That's 12. Yeah. Is it 1240? Yes, 12. evaluation of superintendent. My question, my big question is, I know there's always been some confusion as far as deadlines for when certain phases of superintendent's evaluation has to be in. Just having served on this board for this many years, it seems like it's always a different time of year. Now I know it says the written report has to be in by July 1. I get that. But should there be a timeline set up through the course of the year in our policy that states when certain things have to begin? July 1, July 1 is the final deadline within exactly. the policy. However, that changes based on what we're told by the county office and the Department of Education. So for example, we had to have Mark's evaluation in, and you, everyone reviewed it, and we went over it during the last board meeting. Correct. So we could get it in by April 30th, okay. and we could certify it in the minutes to show right. that as a board of education, you discussed. Well, that's that, what I mean. That yes. was the date that was given to us, and that could change. So to write it into the policy, that's why they have the general policy there. Okay. However, with QSAC and um, county requirements, where they're looking for certain things, they just will sometimes give deadlines right. to make sure that things are in by a certain time and that they're, they're not asking for it during the course of a new school year okay. after one school year has passed. Okay, I just know there's been confusion in years mm -hmm. past about that. I was just wondering if it's something that we felt as a board should be in our policy that by 60 days prior to the deadline, this, this, and this should occur. So is this what so everyone else has? Like, this is what Strauss estimate is saying is okay? Mm -hmm. But I mean, as a board, if you wanted to change that to be April 30th, okay. that the superintendent evaluation will be completed, but then you're locking yourself into that within the policy as well. Well, I mean, I think that um, what Lynn was politely trying to say is, <laughs> you know, sometimes maybe there needs to be a deadline because some to, sure some to make sure it's done. So, correct. The New Jersey should... School Boards Association has a timeline for everything. Yes, they do. So it's on the website somewhere. We can pull it. I'm sure. But they are. What are you saying? They change like mm -hmm. at, at the, the whim of the county. They need. Something well, the county office, need... for example, we went through a QSAC review early in April. Mm -hmm. As a part of that QSAC review, they were reviewing their prior QSAC review that was conducted, mm -hmm. which one of the things indicated that I brought up in October when I went through our QSEC review with everyone was the fact that the superintendent evaluation had not been completed and submitted to the county office. Mm -hmm. And as a board, you said that you remember doing, it, right? doing the superintendent evaluation, mm -hmm. but it wasn't submitted with certified minutes and everything attached. So during our review, one of the things that they wanted from us was no later than April 30th were certified minutes showing the fact that we had done that review and that it was conducted. Thank you. Another thing too, with, the, with the New Jersey School Board is what they recommend it, with the deadlines is that at midpoint, there should be a midpoint review of the superintendent's progress on the objectives and, mm -hmm. and so forth. Right. Uh, well, should that be part of the, when you look at the regulations underneath the superintendent's evaluation, they're listed step by step, certain criteria that have to be met. My point is, if we're given a deadline, okay, Sean's saying it changes year to year. Right? This year's July 1. Let's say next year it's June 1st. So can we specifically state 30 days prior to whenever the it's due? The effective doing? deadline. Right, so 60 days prior to. Just back it up so many days so we don't get stuck in that situation again. I just want to clarify also with the deadline. It's not necessarily a hard deadline by the county. Mm -hmm. However, since they came into review and they knew where we were in our superintendent evaluation, they said we would like to see this completed and show us back by April 30th yeah. so we can complete your QSAC review. Other districts might not be until July 1. Right. 
But when do we as a district hear officially when a an an evaluation should be in for final in the, in the to the town? And the March early April, you hear the steps that you need to take. That's when you guys completed the things online. Right. And that stuff and everything is done now online. So Okay, so we don't hear anything until March and then everybody's running for cover as far as I just it, it drives me crazy. I don't think it's organized. That's my the recommendation point. by the New Jersey School Boards is based on uh, the state regulations. Yes. And the state regulations is July 1st. They strongly also recommend you do a midpoint review, which would be January. Yeah, I know. I and they also that. said that under the regulations, every board member evaluates the superintendent. Right. I know in the past, it wasn't always the entire right. board doing right. it. That's how right. it's supposed to be done. Right. Those are the reg state regulations. and. New Jersey School Board supports them. I think what, it, it may not have to be in policy, but I think that we just have to, as a board, have a calendar. Have a, not, not have a, yeah, we, maybe we have a little board calendar. We yeah. just have to make note of it and be a little more diligent. Okay. And I'm sure that Mr. Um, Dr. McCarran will, um, will, will guide us in that direction. Okay. Um, but okay. I understand exactly okay. what you say. And I think we're all you on board part with of you. The panic situation as well for a couple oh absolutely yeah. I was in here on the last day with Dr. McCarran helping me in the office right. even this year right so and I just don't think we need to do that in that way. yeah we just need to stay on top but I feel like that was my fault though because I was busy and I, I, I saw the email and I didn't I didn't act on it mm -hmm. I feel like maybe you know I, I, we might have to go old school and may have a phone call because once Dr. McCarran called me on the phone and he kind of said, let's go, you need I'm to get in here. Calls. So I think maybe we but need to. But as a board, you also had 100% participation in the superintendent. We did for the first time in a long time, though, is, so that, that's a plus. Mm -hmm. okay. Are you satisfied with that? Hey, if the majority says that they're okay, okay with just that July 1 date mm -hmm. and we backtrack, and we're assured that now is it in our regulations right now that mid mid year we get a progress report from or I don't remember what it's I don't know but we'll get the regulations we'll have to look okay. that up. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll have to check okay. it. And a lot of times what they suggest is also good practice. Just to make sure that you're reviewing not only the superintendent's goals but also mm -hmm. the board goals and that everyone's in, in line with what is going on. Does anybody have any other questions under administration at this time? Yeah. No? Okay, Angel, we're, we're taking this. Angel, right in front of you there, underneath that green sheet. We went through bylaws. We're moving on to page two, which is program. At this time, is there any questions on any of the policies under program? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, policy 2431, athletic competition. Um, again, just a question, second page. Um, the policy doesn't state, and, and again, when we get the regulations, I don't remember seeing it there either, that's why I bring this up. It doesn't state the specific academic or other requirements for a child to be eligible. And the only reason why I bring that question up is that it should be specific, it shouldn't be vague, so that. Uh, a teacher that sees a, a young boy, young girl uh, in, the, in gym class with a remarkable athletic abilities in a certain area might want to recruit them to play a sport. But there's no stating as to what your GPA has to be or, or you, may, you can have no failures or one failure or if you were suspended externally from school. Does this have? I mean, I know there's in our handbook for the students, mm -hmm. I want to say it's a 75 or better. Now this is remember this is what they just sent us. There's nothing in there. Okay. We, we can only put things in there. So yeah. We, we can just say not, that. that thing, you're feeling, you should be the running but school, running school system has that. specific guidelines that are available in the student handbook. Yes. Something like that. That so, will probably so have to be people added. Know, we, we can, can add refer that to that. Yeah. This is, can, if you look up there, this is one of the ones that options to fill in. You should have. Yes. Yeah. We have the options. Yes. So that's what we have to fill in. Too. So okay, so do we do that right now? We can be like, I can. I think we should. Yeah. Can you give me some handbook? Yeah. Wink has one in his office and a nice little organizer. Thanks okay. This afternoon. Okay. So 
That so, way everyone understands that there's no like maintenance. Here, here's a good one. Oh, People cool. in grades what? What do you put in grades there? That's why. Yeah. Yeah. It should be. Allow them, you know, in grades four or five to play. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I just feel like I was just going to say. I can be four, not feel not being fourth or fifth grade. Say my colors. I have no problems with that. So, we, we so we're going to say a pupil in grades four through eight is eligible for participation in school district concert programs of athletic competition if he she passed all courses required for promotion or graduation in the preceding marking period, uh -huh. or we would have to say trimester. You could do that. I mean, yes. So like Why don't we do the second? That one? The we're going to put a, we're we're gonna put a 75 or higher. Right? Is that what it says in the handbook? We're going to put whatever it says in the handbook. So, right? Yeah. So, a pupil in grades four through eight will do the second one, is eligible for participation in school district sponsored programs of athletic competition if he or she has an average of 75 or better in all academic areas. Yeah. And that was a standard. Like, you could have, you know, you have to have that, maintain that average of 75 throughout. Yes. You know what I mean? So, if you, hit, you put below, even if you're already on the team or something, you know, there's the probationary status to get that up or mm -hmm. whatever it is. So. And then you can also put there like C student handball. Mm -hmm. Throughout the season, the athletic season, throughout the school year, what do we throw out in here, number two? He's looking it up right now. Oh, okay. I'll check to see. Well, the number one that you have to pick. Mm -hmm. The student must be passing with a grade of 75 in each major academic area in order to try out and participate in any extracurricular activity. In addition, they must be in good academic standing in all special area classes throughout the district. So again, real quick, in in here it says, a student must be passing with a grade of 75 in each major academic area in order to try out or participate in any extracurricular activity. In addition, they must be in good academic standing in all special area classes as well in order to participate. So even to try out, you have to have those grades. All right, let me have a follow-up question. Yeah. Do we do numerical grades here? Yes. yes. Baseball. Yeah. In the report card, the grades, are, they're not A, B, C, D, F? Not in, no, not in, in the middle school. It is, you know, numerical 95 and A, right? In the elementary school, it is A, B. I, I'm just thinking because it's 75. Mm -hmm. So we have to have we the can scan. We can do a scan. We can do it. Okay. okay. So, we're, so, we're, we're, so we're referring to the student okay. handbook for the wording of this. Yes. 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 So we're referring to the student handbook. So for number two. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to So Okay. Thank you. We don't have number one. No, I can also put, in my opinion, I would put in not only academic, but Attendance. attendance. Well, attendance is the next one. Option for number three. Yeah. Number three for all so people. what's it say? Can you push that up? Yeah, most people in it, right? maintain a satisfactory record of attendance yeah. to be eligible. I we believe the state of New Jersey, you're supposed to have a, what, a child 92% attendance record better? Unless that's changed for the year. It dipped. It may have dipped. Maybe 90. Yeah. I mean, getting specifics here with how many excused absences right. and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Usually we don't, again, we have the policy in place. Um, we haven't had too many major yep. concerns on that in the last six or seven years. So it's good to have it in. Well, what are you, what, so what were you going to put? The un unsatisfactory is the number of unexcused absences exceeds blind school days in the market in the trimester. So how many in the, in, or in the school year? Like, what do you, what do you do for that? Um, out of 180 days, there is a specific number that the state requires. I don't know if it's changed since I've been You're not allowed to have 15. You're not allowed to have more than 15 unexcused absences. I, I know that at the high school level. I think sure. if you have 14 or over 14, you're over 9. You're over 8%, mm -hmm. which is less than 92%. Yeah. Okay. Most school districts, it's 14 days. And after that, uh, you could go into what's called a no-credit status. Yes, that's what, that's up, what happens. You have to make up the time. Right. So you're saying if it exceeds 10% of the school days in that particular school year? I believe that's, that would be Is that 10%? Is that 10%? Maybe we could put a star next to that and look that up sure. and let yeah. us know exactly yeah. what since the doctor. percentage rate went down. Let's be yeah. absolutely specific. Okay. All right. Thank so are you. we going with so days or with Well, we're going to put a star there. We might have to adopt that again next month. Okay. 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 To, to
to if we change so the So you don't have to pick all these options. You can just choose yes. Yes. one. Yes. Yes. So which one are you going to choose? Which one are you going to choose? choose then, right? You have to have number three in there? Yeah. Did you do or three? Well, number two is your grades. Number three yes. is you your grades. Yes, you can add grades and You can add the sentence in number three up into number two. Right. You, you can morph those two together. You can blend them. So it doesn't, you can always add stuff into that. So if we're taking, you know, what that is, elementary and middle school teaching, we can, we can blend those two together. Yeah, to read not only sense. percentage, but we can blend it to have a tendency yeah. as well. I think that's important. specific with Excused versus unexcused absence? It would be, it would be unexcused. It would be unexcused, okay. yes. Yeah. Okay. It's like your kid has surgery or something. You can't. That, I mean, and that also becomes very tricky. Yes. Yeah. Having yeah. dealt with many, many parental meetings yeah. with what's excused and unexcused, yeah. right. we finally adopted a policy that just said absences, period. We weren't going to be a part of determine that's excused, that's not excused. You have to like miss 18 idea. days or 60 like minutes. Like and that's it. Yes. Right. We're not going to sit down with you in a conference and talk for an hour and a half over what, what you think is an excusable absence and what well, we think isn't. My only argument to that is my daughter had two knee surgeries and missed a few a few weeks of school and, stepped in and was still an athlete. So she may have had a head cold as well and put her over that. But her over that. what you can do also is you can put in a policy that uh, under extenuating circumstances, okay. like a knee surgery. So we're going to prove just the regular athletic one tonight without okay. the options. And you got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good. Thank you. Okay. Anything else on their program? Thank you, Ms. Morgan. I keep this for the rest of the day. If nothing else on the program, we'll move along to teaching staff members. Okay. I have a question on number uh, policy 3125. Mm -hmm. uh, employment of teaching? Of substitute teachers? Uh, this is teaching staff. Employment of teaching staff gotcha. members. I was On page two, one, two, three, fifth paragraph down, it's a skinny one. An individual employed by the board in any substitute capacity or position shall be required to undergo a criminal history record check in accordance with provisions. I would feel comfortable if that read, an individual employed by the board in any substitute capacity or position shall be required to undergo a criminal history record check prior to starting the position in accordance with the provisions. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's only my thinking. We have other board members. Well, we don't allow anybody to begin. Well, isn't that part of the provision anyway? That may be part of the provision. Yeah. I mean, did you look up this provision? I did not. If, okay. if it is, then it's I a believe new, that's what it's it is. Yeah. Point. I believe that okay. it is. I'm 99% sure that it is. <laughs> Not but 100%. that 1%, I'm not a 100%, but I'm 99 But that, because I, I agree, I, I do agree with you 100%, how about that? Yeah. How about um, anything else on their teaching staff members? Yes, 3224 is the next one. I have a 3224. Which is evaluation of principals, vice principals, and assistant principals. Yes. Um, yeah. It's the one, two, third paragraph down on the first page. The board shall annually adopt evaluation rubrics for principals, vice principals, and assistant principals, which shall be submitted to the commissioner by June first. I'm just curious. I've never seen a rubric. Well, on a we do have a rubric this year for. Um, Marshall rubric for that. So oh, okay. We we Fine. That answers my question then. Just like when we did the teacher evaluation, we adopted the principal and supervisor evaluation as well. Okay. They've been completed um, and the process is finalizing the third month, the um, third month for all. Very good. Could we see a, a copy? Could you just put that in our pack, a packet next month, Ms. Brian G, yes. of a blank one? I don't need, we don't need to see specific no, no. ones, but just and a blank I, one, please. Honestly, one of the things we're working on this summer is uh, I'm not sure I'm thrilled with the one that are using now. Okay, um, well, we have, so like that, we can adopt the new one. In the future, mm -hmm. I have more of a work with documents throughout the years, and that check, today's still, still a little bit checklisty, if that's even a word. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. I want to have them based on the goals that they set for themselves. And show evidence throughout the year, so it's more like a working. Okay. Very good. I've actually. Okay. I have another one in that in that category. Policy 3372. Uh, a teacher, teaching staff member tenure acquisition. 
uh, under the first paragraph, number one, three consecutive calendar years for any short period which may be fixed. I thought it was went from three to four years. Me too. Okay. So is that policy wrong? Okay, which policy number was that again? Stop. Which policy number was that again? 3372. So, that so that's a federal the, regulation. Federal regulation. So that's only for the teachers who started as of August 2012. So you're Prior still to that, that is three. You're still going to have some staff members. I think next okay. year's your yes. last year. Okay. Of third year teachers. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. That's it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. Yep. Thank you. We got it. That's just that question. And I am done in that area. Thank you very much. No problem. Anybody else under teaching staff? No? All right. Support staff members. general question won't we go on how come there is under support staff a use of social networking sites but not under teaching staff we approved it already is it the same policy well I have 4282 so I can just look at that no this is for support staff Sure, I, I it was the same. I, it was the same. Right, when he went back, he's committed to see yes. that he needed this for support staff. Absolutely. Okay. But I have no questions on their support staff. Does anybody else? Support staff? No question. No? All right, 5,000 pupils. I have one for 5,600. Okay. And that is Pupil Discipline Code of Conduct. I don't see, unless I've missed it, where this policy refers to a set of guidelines for the administration when they're dolling out discipline. You have three different buildings where inappropriate behavior can happen and three different people dealing with that or four different people to here, okay. and it may not be consistent. Uh, I mean, let's say a student commits misbehavior A, this person gives them a detention, and this person gives them internal suspension, and this person wants to suspend from school. Do we have at least a, a chart that says, for this offense, first offense, this is what happens, second offense, this is what happens. Uh, so yeah, there's consistency. Some that in uh, elementary school a little bit different than that in middle school, age appropriate. Yes, I mean, of I know yeah. in this, in this document. <laughs> it's in a regulation. It's in a regulation. There's a chart, Mrs. Wilson? In the handbook? Yeah, there's one somewhere. There are infractions. Like disruptive in class, unprotected class, talks about some parent, teacher attention, parent. No, good, that's. Failure to attend the teacher side attention to administrative. Okay, like good. Is that part of regulations versus the policy? Where is that? Student code. Student code of conduct? Oh, no, I'm saying. What you just read, is that just the code of conduct or is it part of the policy? That's or is it part of the code of conduct. That's part of the code of conduct. But if you wanted to do a specific I'm comfortable with that. You I do just X, you get Y, that's fine. Right. Yeah. Uh, but that would be the regulations. That should, that's, what, yes. that's my question. Yes. 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 Would that be under the regulations? Yes. It should be. I don't remember saying. I, I don't remember. 5600, and the only thing that has to be filled in is the offenses. So that's why okay. I think so we have that in our handbook. Okay. Just, just like we did for the athletic one, we 
get a pretty okay. general tonight and go back okay. and add that stuff in. As long as it's somewhere, and you have it in the handbook. Or yeah, while we're on students, I did not get a chance to go into a policy to see. I just it popped up when I was reading uh, reports for the meeting tonight, and one of the nurses' reports was talking about excuses from gym class. I was just wondering, do we have a policy that talks about <coughs> excuse? What constitutes a parental excuse? Usually, what? usually when a student's excuse from gym, that has to be accompanied by a physician's note. Is that every time? Are you sure? I mean, <laughs> I mean, if the kid's not feeling well, and yeah. their parents will send them to school, I right. used to you know, remove from gym for the day. Correct. Right. Okay. Well, I just want to make sure that we're covering our butts with this. That's all. Okay. I don't want to get into any. Okay, that was just a question. I, this, when I was reading the nurse's report, I thought, oh, I have to go look up and see what's in the policy, and I, I just didn't get to. Okay, I'll take a look at it. Okay, thanks. Any other questions on their pupils? If not, we will move to 6,000, finance. <clears throat> sees like what you're going to do before you go out to the public with that. Oh, uh, yes. So make sure it's... And then Ben will see what it's going to be discussed. Yes. Okay, um, you want to talk a little bit about vending? Talk to the cameras? One thing we discussed also was with the amount of building usage on the weekends and also even during the school day with games after school practices, activities. Even if we had simple vending like water machines, um, water vending machines, um, we do the healthy snacks, um, Sometimes vitamin waters, Gatorades, um, they would all be nutritious um, mm -hmm. in nature, not and sodas and things like that. But that's one way to generate that revenues that would that would go completely towards our food service accounts. But that would also allow us to do things in the food service areas with the money that we generate from that extra revenue. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Look into that. As long as we control the sugar content and what's going mm -hmm. to those families. Right, that's yeah. why you have to just look at the, like, even the fifth Gatorade, if we can have the G2 options, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, like you said, I know there's vitamin water once. For sure, vitamin water once. Calories and things like that. Mm -hmm. What did like, you say? Yeah. Oh, it's like, like, it's it's like drinking My water. son loves, loves it. He loves. Make sure you have one selection of If you're only doing healthy options also, you wouldn't have to limit it to outside the school day. Yeah, oh, it yeah. could be something that was on even during cafeteria hours sure, yeah, um, right. because it ties in with what we're already serving. I think it's a good idea. Let us know how you make out. Seaweed from Japan. Fresh sushi rolls. Sushi rolls. Sushi rolls. Sushi rolls. Sushi rolls. Coming from somebody who doesn't eat from buffets, I'm sure you would definitely try that. Hey, you don't eat buffets? Neither do I. I can't stand buffets. I want someone to wait over and bring me my food. Any other questions on their finance? So, um, the vending option and the signing option to generate revenue sounds like a good idea. Let us know how you guys make out with that. But we have to do that. Can we do signage like that for mm -hmm. my team? All school districts do. If you think about all the gyms you go to, think about all the ice hockey rinks you go to. I mean, there's a gym down the street here that shops. Washington Township has a lot of buses for Saturdays. Trust me, I've been there. 
I remember seeing last year in the news a high school in Texas that the gym roof was painted Coke. A Coke? Coke? No, I was a protective. So it's not goofy, but and they, I don't know how much money they got, but they did that on their gym roof. Well, like Mr. Arnucci said, ShopRite built the gym. Well, the place flying over there near an airport. Was it Coke? Yeah. Um, so we'll move to property then. Okay. Anything under property that is the 7,000s? Uh, 7430, school safety. Yes. Um, if you go down to the third paragraph, I have highlighted the superintendent shall prepare regulations governing school safety and the prevention of accidents and fires that include, as a minimum, the requirements of law and the applicable rules of various departments of state government. Mm -hmm. And at the bottom it reads, safety regulations shall be promulgated to all school employees and shall be reviewed and evaluated annually. Yes. The superintendent is directed to instruct teaching staff members in proper safety precautions. And mine is just a question. It's wonderful. How is this accomplished? And like, is it through a seminar or workshop for the staff? And do they get anything in writing they can refer to? Is it listed under the well, there's a, you have to. Well, you, know, you give us In August, Mark met with the building principals and also the chief of police mm -hmm. to discuss certain safety protocols. Um, How does it get down to the state? GCN, well, mm -hmm. once things are created and developed, um, we then did trainings during our opening day. So that's one of the first Perfect. things that we covered. Okay. And some of the GCN trainings also cover building compliance networks. Okay. Miss Marker's in charge of the district is in charge of that. She hounds them. Where she tells me to get it out. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Anything else under the 7,000s? Hi, Patty. I have one. Sorry. Oh, no problem. So, anything else? No? All right, 8,000. Operation. One thing I, I know the smoking one that comes up once in a while. The smoking? The smoking on school grounds, which also comes up. You do that? Oh, no. Yeah, you do that. I'm just saying that's one thing. <coughs> yep. Yeah. And then also, stay on these things. Um, yep. Okay. We talked about that one meeting about school district provided technology devices, 7523. Mm -hmm. In today's school board meeting, you may have seen online, it also addresses the e-cigarettes. It does. I checked. I checked. That was my question. You have to have the vapor pens and the e-cigarettes now. They're Freshmen love to smoke them in class. That, that's in the public. Yes. So you're not allowed to, so, right? No, no, you're not allowed to. You're not allowed to. The dangerous thing, right? They're permitted to do that. No. Oh, oh, I, I said some right. I thought you said permitted. Uh -huh. No. Yeah. Put that policy in the right. <laughs> so I'm just, yeah. we talked yeah. about school district provided technology devices. I don't know if anybody looked at that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. What number was that? 7523. And he had some concerns about, you know, we're doing a Chromebook initiative, the one-to-one, -one, we want the students, you know, as far as damaging the device or anything like that. For that could be possible. And that is in there. Yep. If there's anything like tonight, we can adopt this. If there's anything you want to add to that. I thought this was good. I think it, I think it covered our yeah, yeah, it's very thorough. Well, it gives the option of including a cost. Um, what we were... Stating though was is with our purchase of the devices, we have an extended warranty that covers the device completely for a length of four years. If anything happens to the device, it can be sent back for full replacement up to twice a year. My feeling is if we have to replace one single device more than twice a year, we might need to look for other options for um, individuals with that device if it was not accidental. Um, this would be the policy, however, parents and students would also be signing off saying that they would be responsible for the device and the only time that a student might be charged a, a fee would be if the damage was, was intentional it was to the device or if it was vandalized in any way. But if it was a simple issue with the device and it wasn't, or it was accidental, we already have that uh, um, procedure in place. For replacement. Okay. 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 Sounds good. Yeah, the last paragraph is pupils shall provide with all school district costs for the use of school district provided technology device and subject to consequences of the school violations. That's pretty solid. That, yeah. that's 
that one. So I just wanted to yeah, I thought it was thorough. And then we did talk about that when we were talking about the one in the issue back in February and March. So now this is also listed under regulations, right? How it will be regulated? Yes. Okay. Now we'll go to operations. Eight thousand. All right. I just have questions with um, the breakfast and the lunch versus serve. Mm -hmm. um, are we selecting an option tonight, or again, are we just passing in general and going back to it? I, I mean, I'm looking at the breakfast option, saying you know, listing all schools, or is it just one school? It would I'm be, just assuming it all would schools, be all like schools. we always I do. Know, look, right? I know, like the offer and this, you know, offer versus serve is a big you know, issue of what they offer mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. So you know, that would be up to us to set that. Give the younger kids the option. Do you want to give the older kids the option? Well, I, I, I know personally, talking to parents in our district, that children do not always eat everything mm -hmm. that they have purchased. They won't. They have to get in line and take it. In the, the, element, the younger elementary schools, they have to get in line, take it or decline it, and a lot of food is not mm -hmm. eaten at the end of the day. So to me, it would save money, it would save the parents money, it would save time and kids could eat what they really want to eat and not have to worry so much about you know, getting upset with your child, why didn't you take the vegetables? Well, I think the, the price yeah. wouldn't change. Yeah, the, price, the, price the price is still the same. They're have to have it, like in the cafeteria that right. day. I mean, the kids would have the option if they wanted it or not. But right. of course, the kid's not parking to Stewed carrots. No, they're not. Compared to, you know, I don't know. Except for my living and so on. Yeah. But practically, you know, they're not going to eat that. Yeah. Put it in your hands. You wouldn't do it. Most people. Well, we can't. We can't. You throw it out. You throw it out anyway. Well, they throw it out. Mm -hmm. We're just doing all three buildings. All three buildings, yeah. And also, the way our food currently comes, it's coming. Package. It's coming as a set. So, to make sure that it has all the requirements that students need to have within their meal. And that's how we get reimbursed um, monthly right. out of that. Right. It's just odd because it says it's to decline all the time. If you read down from the lunch one, too, it says they can decline two of the five requirements. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, I think it makes a bigger difference if we do it in house. Yeah. Does it make such a big difference if we got it anyway? Yeah, you yeah. did. Yeah. Right. So I think we'll probably just go with what the mandate is there, right? Yeah. Once that's it. Any other questions on their operations? No? Is there anything with transportation? Is there any questions on? I know we've talked about it in the past, you know, the emergency situation of transporting students. My mind is still just boggled about how we decipher and do everything when our children become homeless or displaced. That just, I don't know, it just blows my mind and you can keep track of it. I, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> Last week was an interesting week. Oh, I know. It's all about now, but it was. But it can change weekly. Yeah. yeah it can change by the day, actually. It did that. It did week. So. Well, I mean, I know that's the state of our world today. And the other little kids know. They're like, so and so has to take a cab home because he doesn't live in like it's sad. It's mm -hmm. very sad. But I didn't have any. I mean, it is what it is. I'm not transportation. Good. Right. I, personally, for me, I mean, it is actually. Yeah. How about community? Homeschooling. That's all. Just because I don't know anything. No. There still is no regulatory um, agency, I guess, that keeps track of homeschooling, right, in the state. And that's the state. I know it's the state, but the state not. But the state does nothing to keep track. So, you know, right. these children are falling through cracks. They contact your legislator. That's all they do. Hey, they do that. Right. So you're right. The state's holiday. Yeah, the question is, the only way you can 
All right, let's go to regulation so we can try and get through this. All um, regulations will do the same thing. Is everybody comfortable with yes. that? Okay. So we'll get out our summary of regulations. So we'll start again with 1,000 administration. There is two there. Any issues there? I do not have any. I'm just thrilled that we had 100% representation. Yes. Yeah. I don't remember that. Many did not. First time I've been inside. I did not know we had the option not to participate. I thought that was the community. Well, you know how it is. I know. I can't make somebody do something. I didn't think that was an option. So then we'll move the 2000 program. Anybody have anything other than 2000 for program? I just thought that um, the 2414, I just thought um, that that was, it was very thorough and it covered everything. So I don't have any questions. I'm just happy that it was thorough. It's very self explanatory. I didn't have any here either. Anybody? Uh, there are going to be some changes coming up with the fitness uh, medical examination for fitness participation. I know the nurses went to that thing, I would say, last month. Yeah. So there's going to be some tweaks going over that as far as what the doctor has to approve. Yeah, so they approve changed, they've changed the whole um, physical form. There's a whole new physical form that they have to do. And the doctors actually have to have taken some kind of course certification class to be able to sign off on the physicals and the nurses are supposed to have a copy of his certificate to say that he took that class. Oh yeah. my goodness. So we'll make sure some place. But they're gonna to go to a meeting and I think they're gonna try and have the county have a list of doctors that have it, get one of them and then they can just get them now. I can't even imagine that. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah but they're the doc it's sorry I've been waiting for a paper yeah. for my doctor for ten days for my daughter first for the school. Teaching staff members, if there's nothing else there. Anything there? Yes. We're on the 3,000 now. Policy 3221, the evaluation of teachers. Uh, first page, second paragraph. Announced observation means the person conducting the evaluation for the purpose of evaluation will notify the teacher of the date and the class period the observation will be conducted. Why don't we also have unannounced evaluations? Is this an in alphabetical order? I couldn't find anywhere where we have yeah. unannounced evaluations. There it is, right here. I'm going to say, what page? Hey, it's, on, it's right, keep going, another one. Here's unannounced. It was, I looked for the same thing, but it was, it's in alphabetical order. Okay, I apologize. There's I four. Just, I kind of number three. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, well that takes care of that because I think you should have both. And well, with the same policy, the third page, <clears throat> fourth paragraph, post-observation conference means a meeting either in person or remotely. Now, I need clarification. What do you mean by remotely? Because in person means you're meeting with me. Remotely, I'm sure, doesn't mean you and I are meeting at the diner up here on the bike. <laughs> remotely would mean you and I FaceTime. You can use email something. Okay. As long as they're, we're conferencing. Uh, I had yes. an experience working in a district where I'd be evaluated and five or six weeks would go by. I'd get a, a message in my mailbox, stop down, the office sign your evaluation. There needs to be dialogue. That's not how we've done it. Good. Especially with the new, with the new, with the new. We need to have dialogue. With the new evaluation programs, it's almost okay. impossible. Okay. So what other, what other examples of the remote do you need besides FaceTime and emails. We have phone conference. Okay, okay, that's yeah. still write letters. I don't. Know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if we really utilize those methods. No, and I think year. not. I don't um, for the most part, it's a small building, so you're seeing the teachers on a regular basis. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it's not like you're. It's not. It's not a large district where you're going between 19 schools as a supervisor. We we're in the buildings regularly. We're in the classrooms regularly. So I mean, a lot of times I'll end up having my post conference after I'm done. 
observing because the kids are going to their next period. Yeah. So I'll stay there and have the entire conversation with the teacher. And I mean the evidence I provide to the teacher and the score that I provide should then reflect that conversation. Yeah. And that conversation is private. Yes. Good. Unless they want you to represent. They, oh, yeah, they have that right. Yeah, I'm just saying they want to. Do oh, well, I, I just meant like. Not in front of I've seen oh, yeah, where yeah, yeah. someone came down and started talking about someone's evaluation, an administrator, but the teacher has teachers and kids are going by. Yeah, yeah. That's enough. That's a private thing. <clears throat> that was it on that one. Thank you. Yeah, this is very, um, Me too. Yeah. I was surprised. Yeah. So then we can move along the 4,000s. Support staff members. I was good here too. Anybody have any questions? <coughs> Patty, no? Yeah. Okay, very good. Five. Mm -hmm. Five thousands. Pupils. I had a question, but it was answered back on policy of the 5600. Because you have it in your handbook. And my question was, we list offenses, but not the consequences for inappropriate behavior, but you do. Mm -hmm. So that question doesn't exist. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, you always get that one. You know, like, this is the first time I've ever seen this, or whatever the consequences, you know, whatever, something bizarre happens. Mm -hmm. But you try to make it general and not for that state there, and discretion of the or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if there's nothing on there, 5,000, we'll move to 6,000. <clears throat> I think this was uh, self explanatory. Any questions? I did. Angel, anything? Nope. No, Patty? Good. I'm talking back to the 5,000. Yes. Um, this is the, the APDs. Yes. Again, the New Jersey regulation. How is that defined? Is it square footage? Is it floors of the building? Is how does the um, the placement of it? It's uh, 5,300. I think it's the, accessi the, the accessibility oh. of that. Okay. And again, like reasonable proximity. It doesn't give her specifics. Doesn't give specifics. So I will check it to see what they consider. I'm sure there's a somebody out there that says. Right. I, I'm like I, I I'm just concerned with. Well, just since somebody has to travel. Yeah. I know you said, uh, I think it was Christine that checked into this building and we were okay. Mm -hmm. But I don't know about the elementary building. You're going for the other, you, you said about having at least one every other floor yes. or something like that. Yes, yes, absolutely. And at least the top floors in the other two buildings. To support what you're asking, uh, it might be wise to talk to the, the doctor that we use. What does he or she think it, the distance should be between? Right, there, there is a, there is a... I'd rather have a doctor tell me than someone right, who's there is a formula, right. no, there is a formula that's there out is, there that yeah. states, yes. you know, you have to be so many <coughs> seconds from a defibrillator. Right. Mm -hmm. So, my big thing is, okay, uh, this school, for instance, if they're in the gym and they have to go down to the fourth and fifth grade hallway to the very last classroom that's the farthest from the gym, and they come back. are they going to get there in the 30 seconds of time? I think it was 30 seconds. That they're stating it. From the time that person grabs that defibrillator, they should be able to reach that student or staff member within 30 seconds. I believe that's what it is. So I'm um, just I'm concerned about the elementary schools with the upper floors because there's no way there's no way a staff member is going to get to the top floor in 30 seconds on those buildings. How much do they Okay. Moving on. Moving on. All right. Six thousand. I think we said. Mm -hmm. I, I think we were good. Anybody else? I, I was good. Anybody else have any questions? There was nothing for seven, nothing for eight, and there's one under nine thousand. Anything there? Yes. Yeah, I asked the question as far as 
So would it alleviate like the dent on one of the issues? Yeah. Okay. Sweatpants. About sweatpants and wool outfits and things like that. Well, I don't know if wears velour, but I know. Uh, <laughs> I do. You wear velour? So I don't personally, but I know people. Like, one of the big things for sure. You have to have a good work here. Yes, correct. Um, but like one of the things, like, I don't remember one of our old administrations tells us if you have to go home and you don't have to get changed. And sometimes we were saying that. Um, that. That's a good rule, not just on Fridays, but other some, some other days. So we want to make sure. That. I think it's a good idea to have a dress code because you, you're really training the kids from the very beginning, all even to play for work. Right. Well, he's talking about for the staff members. Yeah, so. yes. but that's where the kids learn from. Absolutely, for the role model. Yeah. I think it's a wonderful idea. Yeah. It promotes pride in your district. It promotes pride in your building. It promotes pride in your teachers. And when you when you dress up, you feel better and you. And it's not, I'm not. I'm not trying to say like the entire staff. It's just there's times where it was a little 
relax and you know you don't want to betray that in this district. But um, yeah, so that might be a little But um, and I have no problem doing those theme days and they we have to discuss that with the principals, you know, specific, specific days of the week. If it's Friday game day, it's spirit day, and everything like that, that's fine. And the parents can do to it and fundraising and understand that. Um, you know, inclement weather. I mean, there was enough time to show. I mean, there's times I came in this year in boots and jeans. Yeah. And what we were doing because we had to, you know, mm -hmm. kids, you know, in, the build, in and out of the buildings or whatever. So I understand that. Excessive heat, I understand that. But, you know. Let's talk about it. We have air conditioning now. Let's talk about excessive heat. Not in all. That doesn't fly. Not in all classrooms. And, and there's some, still some classrooms in this building. school today for Sammy's author's thing in the air condition. Oh, yes. That was a wonderful thing. Yes. Never complain it's too cold. So. Uh, you can tell that to bring a hoodie. I, I can't win. So you just want us to review this? You can just take a look at it. Would not be the first um, school district with the teacher staff addressing the problem. No. Uh, it takes some Since consideration. Since I have a question, I don't need to get my hands on it. Physical education teachers related to our teachers to have to, you know. But still, even even if phys ed and health teachers should still be dressed appropriately for the school day. So it addresses that. We absolutely have a policy. As a matter of fact, when we wear jeans, we can't wear a t-shirt unless we have special, special permission as well. We do like a collared shirt or a nice shirt with the jeans. Yeah. What else is jeans made of? What's that? I see number three, jeans made of denim. What else are jeans made of? We used to have white cool. jeans. Right. That's right. Well, they have like the skinny jeans now that are like the the, the spandex. And stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Which okay. can fall under excessive uh, tight fitting. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like, yes. well, yes, oh no, no, no! Yeah, I wouldn't wear them to work. I agree. Yeah. This looks good to me. Very thorough. It's fine. It's very thorough. Unless they teach health all day. That well, I used to get dressed for my health classes. I mean, certainly would. Now I get to come down and say, this is You're not wearing any clothes today. I was like, I'm not? Mm -hmm. well, I need gym clothes, though. Right. Would there be a type of shoe that would damage the new gym floor? Or is the gym floor pretty much does anybody have any questions on this? Because if not, I would like to uh, to 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 move on. Well, first, I want to uh, take a roll call on their policy and public relations to suspect policy 0131 that requires two readings of policy and adopt on first reading of the following manual. Everything that we just went over, the policies, and um, we all we have a motion made by Patty Smith, seconded by Naomi. You just need a roll call. Ms. Adair? Yes. Ms. Beebe? Yes. Mr. Buckhunt? Yes. Ms. Davidson? Yes. <coughs> Ms. Smith? Yes. Ms. Torello? Yes. And Ms. Spalding? Yes. At this time, um, the public, we're open for public comment on any item. Does anybody at this time have any public comment at this time? No? Okay, then. Uh, for the, spe the special policy meeting, I need a motion to adjourn. Comment that motion. Motion made by Lynn. Second. Seconded by Naomi. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I have it adjourned at seven, excuse me, six forty-eight.